What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my main YouTube channel. It feels like the podcast channel because we got Frederick on <laughs> and we normally talk about stuff together on our podcast. We will link that down below in the description. Go but subscribe. We got a great video for you guys today because we're going to flip it around a little yeah. bit. We're going to get the Swedish perspective. Mm. I've talked about things that are surprising to me being the American in Sweden. But what surprises the Swedes when they go to America? Yeah. We got a great list of five things for you guys here today. Except Let's for hit. the except for the amounts of McDonald's per capita. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of other stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to say it's it's great to be here. Uh, it's uh, I'm used to the podcast channel yeah. where we have like uh, like uh, maybe a couple thousand viewers, and uh, so now I'm just gonna get my shit together. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Focus up. Yeah, dude. say that. Say that yeah. stuff. Focus. You're used to talking for half yeah. an hour. We're like, all right, let's get this in like 15 minutes. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, shocking things about America, definitely. Yeah, and it's uh, I want to say it's kind of hard and narrow it down to five things but i think these are five things that since i'm the representative for sweden <laughs> you're representing all of i'm sweden, sweden yeah. in this video i think i speak for a lot of swedes at least i do want to start with maybe an obvious one which is called the healthcare system because the healthcare system is so different yeah it's it's a, a big part in sweden why we why we pay the, the amount of taxes that we do uh because it, it covers like full insurance for every suite basically yeah. and what surprised me was that Sure, in, in America, a lot of people are insured, but the people who are like uh, sort of irresponsible and, and don't really have, have those uh, opportunities or have that kind of money to pay for that, people are like, mm, tough shit. Like, yeah. they're not covered by insurance. So to me, it's, it's just, that's insane. It's kind of crazy. You'd think that just everybody like would be covered, especially when you grow up in a yeah. country where like, anybody could get healthcare that needs it sort of yeah I, I feel like if somebody was like on their deathbed like yeah. doctors will take care of them but then they're gonna get a bill yeah that's like super hot dude that almost that happened to me when i lived in new york like i was i had um i had a sore throat and like i could barely eat soup like it was really bad yeah uh so i went to the uh, er and um then i like signed in or whatever and I sit in the waiting area and I'm like, all right, I guess this could take a few hours or whatever, but I'll manage. And then this guy in a suit comes out with like a, this a chart and he's like, oh yeah, you're Frederick. I'm like, oh, you're the doctor? Like, oh, nice suit kind of. Yeah. And he's like, uh, no, uh, do you have, um, do you have insur insurance, sir? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have my papers in order, but like he, he had to check that like yeah, to make he, sure he had to like come out in the waiting area and like check that i had insurance before i could see the doctor yeah and i was like wow this feels like strange <laughs> yeah dude i can imagine yeah that. he said he wanted to make sure that i could pay for yeah. the visit before actually helping me wow see the thing in america a lot of times the health insurance is covered by like employers mm -hmm. like my parents being teachers they both had really good health insurance plans. Yeah. And that was, I mean, it meant that the kids were covered until the age of 26. So, yeah. like, I was always fine living in America, growing up with them. But right. it's interesting, like, good for you. In terms of the insurance, mm -hmm. like, a lot of Americans, for example, might be more, like, afraid to, like, maybe quit their jobs and try to start their own business because their insurance is also tied to their job. Definitely. So, like, for yeah. example, Swedes might be a little bit more entrepreneurial mm -hmm. or feel like they're able to take more chances in starting their own businesses yeah. because they know that if anything goes wrong, like the government has got their back, yeah. basically. Yeah, so. kind of, yeah. And we do have the most unicorns mm -hmm. in the world, so... Uh. Yeah, uh, Stockholm's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing boom. great in that department. But it's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy because um, also mm -hmm. when, when it comes to the, the private insurance, as you're talking mm -hmm. about, I think... Uh, the people that, that have their, their stuff in order and, and can afford private insurance, I think their health care is really good. Yeah, 100%. Like really, really yeah, good. Yeah. And then you can, you can put other demands on your doctors and yeah. you can like ask for other stuff than you can here. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like in Sweden, um, like I think when you have something that we know that, how to treat like cancer. My dad had cancer a few years back and like they were so quick on like the surgery and chemo and all that. And like he yeah. survived, thank God. But when it comes to, to like uh, other diseases that people don't really know that much about, like, yeah. all right, you have a pain in your neck somewhere yeah. and that leads to pain in your left leg. Hmm, let's send you to 20 different doctors and see yeah. when, when like they don't really have the funds to, to properly look into that here. Yeah. So I think it sucks when you fall in between the cracks yeah. here, kind of. And I think American <clears throat> doctors are more likely to just like try stuff, even if it works, like with writing prescriptions and things. Yeah. Like I had an infection, we didn't know what it was, and the doctors were just like, 
prescribing antibiotics, like no questions asked. So like, yeah. try this one. If it doesn't work, we'll try this one. Yeah. And they're just like, let's make it happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the Swedish doctors are like, we don't really know. So let's just like wait and see how it so goes. So that's and not I'm like, yo, like I'm anything. in pain. Yeah. 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 Nothing we can do. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I sort of, I find myself really uh, not hesitant about going to the doctor here. Yeah. Like I don't really... Um, like I, I don't visit very often uh, unless I really have to. Yeah. But it was really funny when, when I went to, to the ER in New York. Um, like they, they figured out that I needed uh, antibiotics. And yeah. usually in Sweden, you get like a 10 day prescription with pills, right? So yeah. you, you eat a pill every morning and every night for 10 days. And they're like, you're going to feel better after four or five days, but keep taking it throughout the duration yeah. of the full 10 days and don't drink basically. Yeah. And here they're like, all right, get in your stomach. I got like a shot in, in my left butt cheek. <laughs> One shot. And then the same night, I was I was fine. I was really? like, there was something crazy in that shot. And I loved it. But like, this yeah, is so different. Like, definitely. I, I kind of like, I got like the full 10 day cure. Wow. And like one shot in yeah. my butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Dude. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one, which yes. maybe has some medicinal purposes. But, kind of, uh, it could be, it could that's be. That's not the bulk of this point. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, the history behind this one yeah. is that uh, my first uh, my first residency in uh, the U.S. was in Texas. And I was 17, so uh, obviously I like, in, in Sweden I started drinking a little bit. Like I, I tried that uh, and I've been to a few parties. And coming to Texas, I found that <clears throat> more people had actually been high and smoked weed than had tried alcohol. And to me... We were still like, or well, in Sweden, it is a drug. And I was taught like, you know, drug equals death equals heroin yeah. equals weed. Same thing, basically. Like that was how I was brought up. So coming there and like, I just smell. I remember the first party we went to and like, I, I just smell weed everywhere. And I was yeah. like, this is strange. Like, what, yeah. how is it so common? You know, it's become so normal. And like so the whole of West Coast, it's become legal for recreational use. So like yeah. the home state of Washington, where I'm from, yeah. Oregon and California. And then yeah. of course, all of Canada yeah. is now legal. And a lot of people think like, yeah, weed, it's actually better for you than alcohol. Yeah. And so if, if somebody's going to choose between smoking weed and drinking, like a lot of times they'll choose weed. Yeah. And in Sweden, it's completely not like that at all. No. Like it's very illegal, just like on the same. And I think the U.S. has kind of changed a lot in that regard. Like when I was younger, I remember like growing up in school, like it was still pretty much illegal everywhere. Yeah. And we were kind of taught like drugs, bad and we kind of viewed it in the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like in Sweden, but over the last like 20 years, it's evolved so much and become yeah. more and more culturally acceptable. Yeah. And I wonder if the same thing's going to happen yeah, in I was Sweden. Just, I was just going to say like that. 20 years yeah, in the future. Yeah. I, I feel like it's uh, like I see it more in Sweden now. Like it's it's, it's more common. And uh, like I thought that I saw it a lot in Texas, but when I moved to New York two years later, like it was everywhere. <laughs> like, you know, you would see cops on the streets and you would smell weed in the same street and like no one, was, no one cared. Yeah. And I think it's now officially legal in New oh, York, is, but yeah. not in Texas still, uh, yeah, pretty yeah. sure. So like yeah. it's, um, to me, it was, it was really surprising that it was that spread out. Maybe yeah. it wouldn't be as surprising for kids moving there now, but, but to me it was, it was, uh, it's definitely some, something to, to get adjusted to. Because like a yeah. big time stoner could be like, no, man, I don't drink. And I'm like, well, you smoke pot? <laughs> <laughs> like, where's the logic here? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't get it. But yeah. I, mean, I get it now. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so that was interesting. All right, let's hit him with point number three. Let's do it. The third thing that surprised you. Yeah. yeah. And this, this also has a small story behind it. Because, uh, you know, we, we, we joke, like, before I moved to Texas, like, I, I joked with my friend like yeah they're gonna think I'm from Switzerland <laughs> but like people genuinely thought that I was from Switzerland like because they did not know the difference yeah like most people didn't know the actual difference between Sweden and Switzerland and maybe it's it's because like I'm from here that yeah. that it's it's strange to me but it was still like it was still freaking weird because I was like I mean this is just just common knowledge of the world like I know more about different states in the U.S. than than you do probably and and, and and I don't know why that is but to me it was just like people couldn't point out where Sweden was on a map like most people couldn't do that yeah so it shocked me like how how little uh like big portion of Americans yeah. knew about the rest of the world yeah. and I'm not speaking for all the Americans just like a lot of the people that I met yeah I really thought they were gonna know more about outside the borders of yeah. the U.S. dude it's crazy because I thought I was like yeah I'm very educated like geography and everything and then I saw this like map on Instagram it's like point to the country that Ukraine is <laughs> and I was like I'm pretty sure it's this big one underneath Russia 
I was pointing at Kazakhstan, bro. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm fulfilling the stereotype. See, this is what I'm saying, yeah. right but here. I'm yeah. actually, I feel like, compared to the average American, like, pretty knowledgeable. You're probably better, yeah. Yeah, it's super, no, super funny when, like, Sweden was playing Switzerland in the World Cup. Yeah. And everybody was so confused. So confused. They were like, cheese, <laughs> Alps, yeah. Viking but, horns. Yeah. No, that, I didn't there. have horns. Yeah, polar bears. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was, uh... <laughs> So, so it was. It, I don't know. I, I thought like the joke was actually not a joke there. Like it was. It was really like, this is reality. And yeah. and a lot of people that I met. I lived in San Antonio, Texas, which I loved. Uh, but like I heard of people uh, who were like 30, 40 years old, never been outside of San Antonio, never been yeah. outside of Texas. And some people, yeah. like probably 60, 70 percent of my friends there. Uh, didn't even have a passport. Yeah, same where I'm from. People would like, dude. I we lived in Washington, like 20 minutes from the Oregon border. Like I'm from a suburb north of Portland. Yeah. And there's people that have never even been outside of the state of Washington. It's insane. It's like, dude, 20 minute drive. Man, you're in crazy. Portland. Like I obviously think, very few, yeah. but still, like that is mind blowing. Dude, I just think like I think you owe it to your kids to like bring them on trips. Of course, like everyone doesn't have like the privilege of doing that. I'm not yeah. saying like it's that easy but i'm just saying if you're 35 40 years old and you've never been outside your state that is a conscious choice like you've <laughs> you've you've chosen not to travel yeah. i feel very fortunate because when i was super young five years old my whole family lived in germany yeah and so they you got wanted, that cultural exchange it's yeah they yeah. wanted us to have that experience as kids and i think that made me very open-minded about yeah. other cultures and yeah. ultimately a big factor that might have led me moving here in definitely the first place. no i definitely think yeah. so and if you want to hear about more about other cultures you check out our podcasts <laughs> culture shocks yeah <laughs> and smash the like button this video is sponsored by our podcast and yeah. like button money just goes back and forth yeah, like exactly forth. infinite money loop let's go yeah no but right. seriously read up like it's not that hard yeah. <laughs> totally all right uh, let's move to point number four yeah which is uh, tv man TV. so in sweden uh we have state-run uh, channels one and two and then um, not a state-run channel, but it's like it's a still a really big, um, famous channel, number four. Those okay. are like the three channels I would say yeah. most people watch. And nobody cares about three. They're just like, one, two, and four. All right. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, there's just a big-time commercial channel. Like, no one cares. Okay. <laughs> but one, two, and four, that's or actually one and four are like the two channels where, that most people really watch. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not... The news in, in Channel 1 is state run, so it's not supposed to be angled. Like, yeah. it's sort of, it has like a core to, to television, basically. But when I watch television in the US, first of all, like everyone had hundreds of channels. Yeah. And then one household would always watch like Fox News, and another one would always watch CNN News. And yeah. both are mad biased. Yeah. There was no like, there's no like source of information or fact that was like, yeah. these are the news that we watch. And this gives a good perspective. You know what I'm saying? Do you think the Swedish news channel could be biased in some ways? Definitely. No, the, the Channel 4 is more biased than Channel 1. And there's a lot of, of uh, discussions now that, that the one might be a bit too much uh, left-leaning. Really? And like definitely uh, against like the Sweden Democrats, for mm. instance. Like they make they make um, uh, sort of uh, interviews that are like toward against mm. them like put, puts them in a bad light yeah. and I can definitely agree on some points with that but it's not even close to yeah. American TV like it's so polarized and yeah. we have two polar opposites so it's easy to compare it too yeah, yeah. Also. So, yeah. but I think the thing that was super interesting to me about that is the fact that like the channels one and two don't have commercials yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, so we uh, pay for it. And Texas. commercials in America, it's like every 10 minutes there's yeah. a commercial. Break. Yeah, that was, yeah, sorry. I was going to get to that as well. Like, the, like, you know, when you watch on channel four, there are commercials. And you know that, all right, if I'm going to watch an hour show, there's going to be two or three longer commercials. And I know when there's a commercial on, like it's, if, if the show starts at nine, the commercial is at like, 9.15 to 9.22 ish so I have about five or seven minutes there like do stuff but in America like there would be commercials every other minute and it would be like two two uh, two commercial films yeah. on like 10 second sheets and then back to the show huh. and then show four minutes and then back to commercials and like it would it, it would just it wouldn't be like red thread like you wouldn't be yeah. able to follow really you either watch the the show with the commercials or you just don't watch. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe I, that's the idea. I, I would always like just record stuff on the DVR and then I could skip the commercials. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, I would probably have done that too. But like I found myself never watching yeah. television there because there was no like, there was no real consistency. Like yeah. in, in 
what, growing up watching TV in Sweden, you knew like, all right, Thursday night at nine, this show is on. Yeah. And I guess the world isn't really like that anymore uh, with like Netflix and all of... Everything's on demand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, I know like like the, the channels here, they really try to have like, you know, Let's Dance or Swedish Idol and stuff like that and running. And they yeah. we have like Masked Singer now. Uh, which is like every Friday uh, yeah <laughs> so there's still like a consistency to it yeah. I just never found that in the US watching TV so yeah. I just never watched and also when it comes to like sporting events American football has so many commercial breaks compared to like uh, European football or soccer match yeah, it's yeah. like 45 minutes and it, you just really see this American mindset of like how many commercial breaks can we fit in yeah, yeah, yeah. into such a short period of time yeah and you're like for, you can't walk away from the TV because you think it, might, it could start again any second, yeah. so you have to like wait. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's like the idea. Maybe that's like smart, you know. Maybe. But um, Maybe. yeah. All right, moving on to the fifth and final thing that surprised you mm, in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, the idea was to end on a positive note, but then we just did, don't. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, it, 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 I reordered yeah, the list. Yeah. <laughs> but this is uh, uh, this is it, this is a serious issue: uh, drinking and driving. And to me, um, growing up in, in Sweden, like just to get the license, we have to sit on like a four hour class, just how dangerous drinking and driving is and really awful statistics. Like, yeah. you know, it's really, really frowned upon even to have like one beer and then drive home. Like people generally don't do that. Yeah. But in the US, like for a lot of different reasons, it was, it was way more common. Like I would see drunk driving. Yeah. Left and right. Logistical differences. All right, we've got 0. 0.08 versus 0. 0.02. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or point. Uh, it's like four times higher. So yeah. So we, we like got legally, point two here. Yeah. Legally, we can have a couple of drinks. Yeah. And drive home legally under the limit, depending yeah. on your body weight and how much time has gone by. You actually get a little chart to see, like, all right, if I weigh, you know, a hundred kilograms, I yeah. can have three drinks and wait three hours. Yeah. Fine to drive home. Yeah. And in Sweden, it's much like you're already having one drink and you're already kind of over the limit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the mindset here is either you drink or you drive. Yeah. And I get the idea of like being very informative about you can have three drinks and then you can drive after an hour. Yeah. I get the idea behind that, yeah. but it's also given, given the, giving you the green light to drink and drive in the yeah. same night, which is, I yeah. mean, I understand if you're a responsible human being, that's, you yeah. can definitely do that. But you can when you when you can drive when you're 16 years old. Yeah. You're not gonna have that judgment. No. You know. I mean, you can't drink when you're 16. <laughs> but you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of the 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 thing. It's like you're not supposed to drink and drive. Like everybody knows that. Yeah. But it's also like so difficult to get anywhere with the public transportation. I know. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. So people fall into this category of like, all right, I'm the driver. I know my limits. I'm just going to have two or three drinks over the course yeah, of the night yeah. and stay in control. Yeah. Whereas in Sweden, that mindset is completely gone. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm the driver. I'm not going to touch a drop of yeah, alcohol yeah, whatsoever, yeah. which yeah. I think it's better mm -hmm. because it's more like black and white. Yeah. But, but like when you're raised in this culture, like, you know, it's illegal to drive drunk over the limit. Yeah. And so maybe if you have three drinks, you're flirting with that limit. Right. Yeah. And you yeah. might be, you could get a driving under the influence and that's yeah. huge. You could lose your license and all these things. Exactly. But there is still this like gray area and this cultural like more looseness yeah. around the whole issue versus in Sweden it's much more like it's more black strict black. like it's it's, yeah. it's it's like either you do it or you don't yeah. uh, like drink and drive obviously yeah. um, uh, which is basically you, you just don't do that yeah. and um, I remember in in Texas I was introduced to the to the um, the expression uh, a DD like a designated driver yeah. so someone was like you drive and you don't drink as much as we do basically that was yeah. the idea and I totally like got it as well because in Texas like they don't have buses they don't have trains like you have to drive yeah. and if we're like ch tw 20 people chilling at a person's house that's how I like was squeezed into this situation once myself I ended up and like some guy, some guys like typical Texas pickup huge truck yeah. <laughs> and he was like wasted he was super drunk and I remember I was also like sort of drunk but I wasn't that drunk but I was still drunk and I, I couldn't like I I didn't have my license back then so I wasn't gonna drive but like all of my friends were just packed up in the other cars and it was just me and him left and I just get in and I remember him like 
I could really tell he was drunk, but sure. but I just felt like I didn't really have a choice right yeah, there. And then, that's scary, just, man. Yeah, it was really scary. And and then, but but you know, my my drunk mind was like, oh yeah, it's fine. Maybe I'm not really seeing stuff like clear. But thinking back at it, and also experiencing that that car ride, like he was not driving well. Yeah. Like he was swerving lanes, and like yeah. there was a red light, and he really hit the brakes, like. <laughs> You know, it was it was it was bad. It was big time bad. Yeah. And I've seen friends there that like wreck their cars and they make mo- they make jokes about it. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I was a bit drunk, you know. And so so I think that really surprised me how loose people were about it. Yeah. And I think the one the one big reason is that if they could get around with buses and cars and cabs, yeah. That like we can, like it would probably be easier to be like, hey, don't drive. Exactly. Like, you're stupid. And maybe if you live in a more like condensed city, yeah, like you can, yeah. you know, you can get like Ubers and taxis nowadays, yeah. like much yeah. easier. So. Yeah, and you don't want like here, you don't want to take the car because like when you go on the city, you can't find parking. Yeah. Unless you so, want to pay a shit ton, like it's yeah. <laughs> so so it's just stupid to take the car. Yeah. Like you just don't totally. want to do that. Yeah, but I think I think that ought to to end it on a negative note, like <laughs> drinking and driving, it's too spread out there, man. And I, I'm talking about Texas now because in yeah. New York, like it was just caps everywhere. Yeah. Obviously. But overall, those were the five most surprising Ooh. things. We're wondering which of those surprised you guys the most. Yes. So leave a comment down below, and don't forget to check out our podcast channel that we have linked in the description as well. Link down if here. you like this content, you're going to like that content. Yeah, so we'll see you more. over there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. See you. See you.